What's up, everyone? Riley here, and welcome to the latest segment of Overkill Reviews. If you haven't already, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and definitely make sure to check out the Patreon. We have a very exciting one today. This is Canadian technical death metal through and through. This is Cryptopsy's latest album, As Gamora Burns, out on September 8th, 2023, on Nuclear Blast Records. Promise are you to me? Formed as Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, based out of Montreal, Quebec, they quickly changed their name to Necrosis. Did that for a little while, and then 1992 comes along and Flo Mounier joins the band on drums. He has been Cryptopsy's most consistent, long-lasting member of the band, and right after he joined, they rebranded as... Cryptopsy. Of course, in 1996, they released None So Vile, which was that album that everybody fucking loved. It like made such an impression on technical death metal for all of the bands down the road, and nobody <laughs> ever stopped talking about it. But after that, they had a lot of various lineup changes, which led to a lot of new songwriters, which led to the question of inconsistency in sound with albums that came out after that. So with this new album, and our new lineup, which consists of Flo on drums, of course. We have Christian Donaldson on guitars, Ollie Pinard on bass, and Matt Nagaki on vocals. Is this the redemption arc that we've all been waiting for? Let's get into it. So it's been 10 years. It's been a whole decade since Cryptopsy released their last full length album. And I recently read an interview with Matt McGacky and he was talking about just why it took so long. He said everybody was in different places, they were doing different things, and they tried to write music over Zoom calls, but imagine writing Cryptopsy over a Zoom call, like I just can't wrap my head around that. So nonetheless, it wasn't working out. But by the time they all got together, they realized how much things had changed over the last decade, specifically with reaching fans on the internet and various different types of promotion. And this led into the theme of this new album and the concept of our modern day relationship with the internet. The new album has a lot of lyrical content and all of the riffs are connected to that theme. They have content about isolation, online stalking, spreading misinformation, and it really has that influence of that sort of modern day nightmare. <laughs> There's eight tracks on this new bad boy. And the longest song is five minutes tops, like just above that. The rest of them are from like two to four minutes. So there is no room for you to get bored. You're, it's not even an option. You can't, it's not allowed. We're moving so fast, we're moving so quick, we're moving so mean. And with like within the first song, there isn't even really an intro. We just absolutely dive right into it. It's frantic, it's unbelievably fast, and it's so technical. And Flo is just constantly slamming and annihilating every single song. They're obviously known for fast tempos and that very impressive technical skill that they have. There's so many semi-solos in this, there's tempo changes, there's time shifts, and of course, those tiny little melody bits. And every time I listened to it, I heard something else. And of course, our vocalist, Matt Nagaki, he is great. I know he's gotten a lot of flack in the past for not being Lord Worm, but he's doing a great fucking job, okay? So in that interview I read, the band was talking about something that they really tried to hone in on in this album, which happens to be a developmental project, I could say, that they're doing with the riffs. So they stated that they wanted to let their riffs breathe for a longer period of time for the first time since None So Vile. So the angle being that they write these riffs, they're good riffs, 
they put a lot of work into them. And instead of writing more riffs that would just then act as filler and maybe look a little bit sporadic, they're using less riffage and using that less riffage for longer extended periods of time, or they're repeating the riffs in other spots. And on my listen through, this was definitely noticeable. It definitely sounded a little bit more logical. The flow between songs kind of seemed more consistent. And I don't know if for you that would be a negative or a positive. I know a lot of people liked Cryptopsy because they're very sporadic and chaotic. And that's not completely gone, but they definitely have honed in on a more natural and flowing, maybe easy to digest version of technical death metal. Let me know in the comments what you feel about that. And of course, groove has always been crucial and important when listening to Cryptopsy. That's like what they've been known for. The, some of the riffs on None So Vile and that groove that they got are the best fucking riffs I've ever heard in my life, that groove. And there is many a groove on this album, so no need to fear. <laughs> Feel like loud bands that have a lot of things going on, especially very technical bands, if the production isn't luscious and rich and clear and I can't hear the fucking drop of a pin, then I'm disappointed because I want to hear all that technical skill and songwriting that we have. And I think the production was just a little too gritty for me. And I can understand that that leads into that aggressive nature that they have. They're not clean. They're not a clean band. They're a mean band. The production wasn't for me. It's a little too mean. If you want an album that is mean, that is aggressive, that is fast, that is classic, that you know, then this is that. It is that exact cheeseburger. You know exactly what you are biting into. There are no surprises here. We're not like getting weird with anything. We're just screaming and we're yelling and you love it and it's hearty. And afterwards, you might feel a little shitty because you're so full of anger. But at the same time, it was beautiful and you could eat eight more. It was great. And that's all I wanted. I want to punch a hole in the wall and I want to eat a cheeseburger. And I got that. And you'll get that. And with all those tidbits that are so fun and really so great, my final thoughts and my tear apart piece of how I really feel underneath about this new Cryptopsy album. I think there's been so much pressure on this band for literally the last 30 years to drop something that is tangibly similar to None So Vile because that just ripped everybody's hearts apart and they loved it so dearly. But I think that's taken away, unfortunately, from the band's sort of natural progression into things. And of course, that is a super fantastic album, but even the band finds themselves comparing it to none so vile with every new thing that they do. Like we're gonna write these riffs and we're gonna drag them out a little bit more since the first time since none so vile because everybody loved that album and we wanna drag people in and whatever. But it's not the same people anymore. It's been three decades, okay? This is a new form of this band. This is a new album. This is three new decades later. And it's great and it's great for that. Okay, if you're looking for a new album with some similarities to something that you could smell in the past, and like I'm guilty too, I've compared it myself, but I hate jumping into this just thinking it's only gonna be good if it sounds like this, because that's not true at all. And then that takes away from you possibly enjoying the album because you've already thrown it out the window because it didn't sound like you wanted it to sound like. So don't go into this thinking this is what I want from this because it's something new and it's something exciting and it's something different. And for this modern wave now of technical death metal, they're on fire. They're on top, okay? They're untouchable, even if it isn't the exact same thing as it was in 1996. I'm gonna give it a four out of five skulls today on Overkill Reviews. My first shout out. I'm a little behind on this one, but I was just talking to Klaus who owns Futhark Records in Toronto. And if you haven't been there, you need to go because he has an unbelievable collection of metal vinyl. He supported putting this album out 
on his label. This was his first label support that he's ever done. Uh, the band's called The Scum, and the album's called The Hunger. This came out on April 18th of 2022, and they're based out of Columbia. It's just rampaging old school death metal. So if you're into that sort of thing, this is what you're going to go listen to. Then I have Armistice with the Forgotten Past. This is uh, like post-black metal from Guelph, Ontario. This came out on August 11th. They do an impeccable Agaloc cover on this. So if you're into that sort of thing, this is that for you. Then we have the Canadian death metal band Scorn with Psychosis, which came out on July 14th. This is a re-release slash re remix of an older album that they had, but it's just absolutely perfect. If you're looking for something to be angry with, this is the album for you. And that's what I got today. Thank you for coming to hang out with me. Let me know what you're thinking about the new Cryptopsy in the comments section down below. Have a good one. Cheers. I was promised so you told me. Ah!